will deploy, reducing the complexity of mainframe product deployment and configuration. We are extremely pleased to have as our speakers today CompuWare Product Manager Bill Mackey, Systems Architect Rick Adams, and Technical Services Director Keith Sisson. With that, I'd now like to welcome and hand things over to Bill. Bill? Thanks, Janet. Welcome, everybody. Simple Deploy is the next step in our goal of simplifying the installation of our products. Our first step was to simplify our install documentation, which we did over previous quarters. Systems programmers, rest assured, we're very focused on making installs easier, and it won't end in April. Compute Simple Deploy will allow systems programmers to more easily install, update, and deploy Compute mainframe products. In short, we're making deployments easier. So how are we going to do this? A new, uh, we're going to add a new API that reduces or eliminates need to uh, edit product startup REXs and CLIS. We're going to take advantage of the CompuWare CMSC PARMWIBE to store and retrieve CompuWare install data set names by using this new API. And there's nothing stopping us from moving beyond CompuWare data sets if that's where you want us to go. So let's talk about the problems we're solving. First, we realize that there's no reason we couldn't automate the manual process of updating data set names in product CLISs and RECs. Simply, this new approach will save you time. We hope to eliminate errors. When installing, comp when installing products, you can easily make a typo or get a data set name wrong, and then the products will fail to start up. Using the CMSC PARMWIBE, CompuWare can validate data set names to help eliminate errors. And when updating CompuWare mainframe products and deploying to numerous environments, systems programmers are typically copying existing REXs and CLISs and then editing the data set names to fit the environments. This is no big deal if you only have one or two environments, but we have customers with upwards to 150 different environments. The amount of editing can be painful, to say the least. So here's an example of a startup CLIS and the data sets that need to be edited. This has to be done for multiple CompuWare products and then done again for every environment that I deploy into. While some people find editing data set names fun, we believe many others will be happy to have CompuWare alleviate this burden. Now we would normally show you what this PARMWIBE member looks like in Topaz Workbench, but for that one remaining person out there who isn't using Topaz Workbench, I decided to show it using ISPF. Here we're showing you an example of a CMSC PARMWIBE member. A couple things to note here. First, the CMSC member is a place where we can store all CompuWare install DD names and data set names in one place. We can validate the DD names and data set names to help reduce errors. You can use system symbolics to take care of things like LPAR names. You can use an include statement if you want to separate the DD names and data set names by product. And finally, the REX or CLIS specifies the FM ID to select the, cor the correct DD info entry in the CMSC member or the default DD info entry if no FM ID is specified in the entry. Rick will give us a little more detail on how, to, on how this looks in a minute. So benefits. First, we take advantage of the CMSC to allow you to store and update your data set names, your CompuWare data set names, in one common place. Second, we aim to eliminate the need to edit CompuWare install REXs and CLIS. Third, using Symbolics allows you the flexibility in picking up things like LPAR designations. Fourth, using CMSC PARMWIDE, CompuWare can do data set validations that we couldn't do before. Fifth, deployment should be much faster. Sixth, having multiple versions in an environment won't be an issue here. Seventh, our goal is to move towards a ZOSMF common install in the future. This moves us in that direction. And finally, this satisfies an ease of use goal for us and for you. So for April, the CompuWare products moving to this new simple deploy capability are FileAid, AvidAid, Expediter, and ECC. The other CompuWare mainframe products will come on board in the near future. Rick will now take us through a little more detail on how, this, how all this will work. Rick? Good afternoon. Um, 
back in 2015, we started a, a project that was considered our simple installation effort. Uh, we had parameters for the products, you know, across data sets in the, in the LPAR, and it made it difficult to uh, find them if, it, if that wasn't your duty, to find them and fix them if you needed to. So the first step we had to do was to come up with a centralized parameter storage location. We had to have certain things to meet criteria for installations that were large. Um, we needed to have a persistent storage so that even if the address space, the CMSC went down, your products, computer products would still be able to start up and not be impacted. We didn't want to process the parameters uh, on the fly, doing I.O., et cetera. So we decided that at, at CMSC startup time, we'd process all the parameters and do all the validations we could and store all that data in a common memory object. And that common memory object is persistent across the cycling of the CMSC. The common memory object also allows us to uh, either refresh when a CMSC is restarted or to refresh a particular parameter member or all parameter members uh, through console commands. So if a console command is entered to refresh a particular member before a product starts up, uh, it will be processed and then stored in the memory object ready for that product to start. So to access the common memory object that is persistent, we had to have a persistent system level call. So we have implemented that normal program call um, that allows products to be able to get to the CMSC's common memory object without it being up, and it's just a data movement storage instead of any I.O. processing. So version one, we call it version one uh, Parm Live process. We allowed for a centralized product parameters for all products uh, to go into the CMSC, and for those products to be able to retrieve those uh, parameter members at startup time. We had to conquer some of the things like what if you had two strobes or what if you had two abandates. So we had to allow for each address space to be able to specify which parameters member, which parameter member it was interested in retrieving. So we gave a couple of ways to do that. There's a, a if you're a strobe server and it's not the production strobe and it's a test, you can add a DD card that will override the defaults that are stored in the default member of the CMSC. So all of this is controlled with parameters for the CMSC, of course. Each product has a default um, member parameter. If uh, your product comes up without specifying an override, you get that parameter member, and we retrieve that from the common memory object. So we allow for products to be able to get to these parameters very easy. They're, they're centralized now, and we're, we're pretty happy with the way it's managed, uh, refresh, et cetera. A couple other things we needed to, to overcome with a common CMSC stands for the Common Mainframe Services Controller, is not just primary processing, but other tasks that can be done that we have asked, been asked to do. Um, we had a request to minimize our address spaces that we needed to run every time the system was IPL. So we incorporated license management processing into the CMSC. You no longer had to have a license management started task, uh, even if it wasn't persistent. And if you were a CLS license management user, you no longer had to have the server and client running a separate tasks or address spaces. So we brought those guys into the next, into the CMSC. And so we have license management server client. We also added the zip support. We have CompuWare uh, zip enclave for uh, zip uh, services for, uh, used by CompuWare products that get started uh, as part of the CMSC. So that reduced another started task uh, in your startup for your IPL. And then lastly, we, we added the HCI control. Some people, some of our customers don't have uh, auto ops type packages, so we added the HCI control under the CMSC, and when the CMSC starts up, it will attempt to start up the HCI. You can start and stop it through common uh, uh, commands through the CMSC, and um, if it goes down and you didn't ask the HCI to uh, terminate, then it would start it back up to recover that address space. So we added those, uh, those on as version one Parm Live, um, and that was delivered in uh, January of 2016. Mid-year, uh, since we are agile, we needed HTTP support for other products such as uh, ISPW to utilize, so we added an HTTP client support in the CMSC so that all products, all computer products that need HTTP support can now use a centralized environment and not have to replicate that environment. And that took us through July of 2016. 
Then we started down version two, Parm Live. That was our next big step to try to simplify the effort. Um, we, version one did not have any type of parsing. It was just a read the members from the file that was specified uh, in the common Parm Live concatenation for the CMSC and just store them in the memory and that was it. Uh, version two, we wanted to make a uh, centralized parser and that was our goal for version two. So when version two went out in October of 17, 2017, we now have a common parser um, that has implemented like syntax for all the product groups. Um, in the past, license management, computer license management was a parenthesis bound parameters and other products had um, some kind of freewheeling parameters. Now they all are the same uh, format and the same uh, syntax. So we rolled that out um, and added a few extra uh, checks for that. Uh, our customers said, you know, I, I give you a data set name and it's, it's not there. Or I give you a data set name for an off live and it's not APF authorized. Can you do something about that? So we added that, those checks when we uh, bring up the CMSC and go through uh, the parameter members. Um, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. That was for the assembly deploy. Um, what we have done with the uh, parser implementation is if it's a data set name, we validated that it's, it's syntactically correct. If it's a member name, it's syntactically correct. Um, the parameters all are syntactically checked now to uh, provide for the startup of the address space to be successful. Um, there's nothing worse than changing parameters and then starting up, you know, an address space for CompuWare and it not starting up. So our attempt is, our goal is to make sure that when you create the member and you refresh it or you recycle the CMSC, the parameters are valid and they, they will allow the product to start up. But the only caveat to that is if you give us a bad data set name that's required and it's not um, available on that system, then of course the product would, you know, get an open error and we'd have a problem. So, um, we've done what we can for the syntax checking in version two Parm Live to make sure that products will start up for us. And then the last part of our, or this, this most recent part of our CMSC expansion was for the simple deploy. Um, we wanted to simplify the efforts uh, during installation and managing CompuWare data set names, as you know, has always been uh, uh, kind of daunting. So we came up with Simple Deploy. We have uh, modified our C-list and REXs that are used by um, our users out there. And the REXs and C-lists, if uh, uh, the Simple Deploy implementation is performed, will get the data set names from the PARM members that were specified for that product or for that implementation. So we rolled out Simple Deploy. Um, it's just another parameter member inside the CMSC. It's, it's a just like it is if it was strobe. It's another parameter, remember. Its contents are uh, DD definitions. And um, the DD definition will tell us what type of, of data set we're looking for, the data set name, and an FMID that is supplied. So all of those uh, pieces of information are used to uh, enable the REXs and C list that we're going to uh, deploy to work successfully. Some of the added things we added in there, some of the things we added in there are um, if you tell us it's a authorized data set because of the data, the DD type, then we will check on that system to see if it is actually APF authorized. And if it's not, we'll alert you that that data set is not authorized. Um, if the data set is not, doesn't currently exist on the LPAR, we will also alert you that the data set doesn't exist in case you were doing uh, this editing and they're going to create the data sets later. So we're trying to provide for um, availability and uh, APF authorization levels for those data sets that we use and make sure those are correct. Well, that's simple deploy um, from the CMSC point of view. Um, the same API, I shouldn't call it an API, the same system level interface is called for all the simple deploy tasks, uh, the Rex and C list, as does our products when they start up. So we had to externalize that uh, call into the Rex and C list that we, we distribute today. So in the past, you would get a, a C list or a Rex from CompuWare in our install uh, SMP EM data set, and you would have to go through and change the high-level qualifiers to your data set names and the low-level qualifiers to the low-level qualifiers you've set up when you created those data sets. 
and you would go through and you'd either do a mass change or you'd change them one at a time. Um, we have changed that. Um, so when you look at a, remember today, you will see um, the if statement below says uh, if uh, ampersand x denode string harm life. Normally that's where the documentation tells you if you're going to do it the old manual way, then you would change this um, harm life specification in a previous step to the right data set name. This is, this is an example of how we implement the simple deploy. When our product code runs through this, if that harm live string is still there, then that means that we have to go get a call to the CMSC and it will return us the real data set name that we want to use. So we have made these changes throughout our uh, C list and Rexes that are being delivered today for simple deploy and will be automatically uh, implemented unless you modify them manually. So this is the invocation code. Uh, the next screen is going to show what the code looks like um, to set the PARM live data set itself. So this is, um, again, our code. We're going through there and we're saying um, if it's a PARM live DD, if it's a PARM live request from the C list or Rex, we need to know what the DD name we're looking for. Um, that is supplied in the DD member that we use for simple deploy. And we also have a FMID in case you need to have specific uh, DD names to re uh, supply specific data set names. Um, this is, if you run two strobes, you might have a strobe with a no FMID, FMID, which is the default production, and then a uh, FMID for the new release to indicate that you want to get this other data set for the uh, strobe 18 release is an example of what we'd be doing here. And so this is our invocation call. Um, it, it, it calls a uh, module uh, MSCU DDRX for Rex C lists or for Rex uh, uh, installs. And that, that module name is actually delivered in the uh, CX, SLCX load data set. It needs to be either through um, uh, regular uh, linked list type uh, implementation or manually copied into a linked list data set because that member is the key to success. If, uh, we have to have a starting point somewhere and the linked list is where we're going to look for that guy. So if uh, MSCU uh, DDRX is found in the linked list, we will uh, be able to use our API and, and implement all this uh, simple deploy architecture. This is what, as Bill showed earlier, this is what the uh, member looks like in your Parm Live. This is um, uh, DDSN, I believe, I cannot read zero that. One. Uh, zero 01. Yeah. This is DDSN 01. Um, you can have multiple DDSN XXXX members um, in case you want to do, um, have different levels of file aid, for example, might need different DDs, then you'd have different levels of DDSNs, and that's all described in the file aid uh, uh, install guide. But this is what our member looks like, and so every time we do one of the uh, simple deploy PARM live lookups, we will go to the memory object that has uh, been populated from this type of uh, member, and we will search through that memory object to return the uh, DD name or to return the data set name for the DD and FMID that you have specified in the C list. Um, the rules are, are not that complicated. Um, you can specify an FMID, and if the product matches, then you get that one. It's the, the highest level match. If you don't want to have FMIDs, you can leave the FMID off if you're only having one release of the product, and we will Look for the matching FMID, and if we don't find it, then we'll look for a non-matching uh, or a non-specified FMID and pick that one up. Um, it's uh, a little more than we can really have time to talk about here, but it's explained more in the install manuals. And the next slide. The previous slides we showed uh, Rex invocations. This is our C list invocation. It's the same type of thing. Uh, the difference is instead of calling it MSCU DDRX, we're going to call it MSCU DDCL for our C list. Uh, the same uh, occurs. Uh, FMID is passed by the products, and a DD name is passed by the products, and we will return the data set that, is, uh, that coincides with that, that request.
That is an overview of the CMSC as it stands today. Uh, we have uh, further things to put in it over the future. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Keith. Thank you, Rick. Um, it's, uh, as a former systems programmer, I really enjoy hearing the technical details about how things work. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a recap of kind of what we said to uh, emphasize the point and also to uh, show you a little bit more specific examples of, of what we're talking about. Now, I really want to emphasize also that this is, um, you know, our, our goal is to reduce the number of installation-related tasks. That's what we're trying to do here. And this is really low-hanging fruit for us. Having somebody go out and manually edit uh, data sets and C lists uh, seemed like something that we could logically come up with a, a way around that. Um, hard coding data sets is never a good plan in, in my spot, in, in my mind, in multiple different spots. So now, essentially, instead of hard coding the data sets, we're going to dynamically access the data sets, the copyware data sets that we're looking for. It's pretty straightforward. We're creating a DDSN member in Common Parblive, and then we're going to add DD name and the corresponding data set name associated with it. I'm going to show you some examples of that. I, I know you've seen a couple already, but I just want to make sure that um, it's clear, the point is clear. I also want to say that, again, this is the first pass. We have a lot more things on our roadmap. And uh, you were asked to, at the end, to fill out a survey, and we really do listen to customer input, and it's uh, extremely important that you do that or contact your sales rep or your account consultant because we do very much value that input. And as a matter of fact, several of the customers that are on this call today had direct input into us coming up with some of the ideas we have moving forward. So I want to just take a step back and say conceptually, this is like conceptually similar to the operating system's link list. If you wanted to create a link list, you, you, you create a member in the ZOS Parm Live and you add program libraries to that, you refresh that member and then those programs become available to start a task, TSO, uh, batch and other aspects. So the concept was the same. We wanted our data sets to become available by putting them into a central spot. So the first thing that's going to happen is, <laughs> thank you, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get maintenance and that PTF is going to have whole data associated with it. Um, the whole data is there for a couple reasons. One is it's to tell you that if you previously edited a Rex or a C list, you don't have to do that anymore. So you're going to be replacing something that you customized previously. You should be able to just take the C list as it is, or Rex, and move it into the appropriate library. The main thing you have to do is you have to have created your DDSN member. You have to have created that member in common Parm Live. Uh, and refreshed it in order for this to work. Now, this, this whole data does a pretty good a job, I think, of summing it up. We have, this is our whole data template, basically. It's the same whole data for every C list or Rex that will be modified. Um, so this is just a, a good way of making sure the systems programmer knows that he has steps that he needs to do. So the DDSN member itself as Rick has talked about, is pretty straightforward. It has a, a DD info block associated with it, and that is we relate the DD name to a data set name, and you can optionally include an FMID, and I'm going to explain that again too, and also you can include stuff from other areas, and I'll explain what I mean by that. But the point is, is that you're simply going to have a block of data that, that links a DD name to a data set name that you describe. So here is an example of a snippet of, of a DDSN member. Notice that it has DD underscore info, that's the start of the DD info block, and it has an end at the end. So DD name, CXVJC live, 
is related to VS name sys2.cwvjr17a.cxvjclife. So you can see that those two are related to another. What we expect, the typical shop will have one DDSN member and they will have a simple DD info block for every CompuWare data set that exists. We, we don't expect, but we've coded for a, a, a variety of flexible options associated with it. But what we expect is one DD name, one data set for every DD name that our products, uh, that our products require. But I want to remind everybody that all of the CompuWare Common Parm Libs resolve system symbolics before the memory objects are completed. So you can you feel free to include a system symbolic in this member as well, in the DDSN uh, Parmlight member. It works the same as the other. You can include system symbolics, and they are resolved um, before, before they are uh, loaded into the common memory object. So we just talk a little bit more about the DD info blocks, too. So you have a DD info block, and it has a, uh, a name and a DS name. So we, in, we also allow you to use the incle include keyword. And right now we're saying include from this external data set some more DD info blocks. And the reason we did that is to give customers flexibility to have uh, their DD info blocks be in an external library. And the reason that is is some of our customers had said one team uh, controls the common Parm Live, CompuWare Common Parm Live library, but another team maybe installs Abendate and they don't have access to that library. So we allow them to include from a library that they do have access to. It's sort of like a copybook. It just brings in everything from this AA00 member as DD info blocks included into this same member, and then all of them loaded into one DDSN that all the products can use. So i also like to say that this include statement, the data set name or the ParmLive member itself here could be a system symbolic. Perhaps you have a different one for every LPAR. And also the members within that AA00 that you're bringing in could have system symbolics. All of those system symbolics will be resolved before that it is loaded into memory. Another option that you have is the ability to, um, to specify FMID, as Rick mentioned previously. The reason that we include that is if you want to run two versions of the same product. If, you, if you're only running one version of the product, you don't need to include FMID. That is a that is an optional component, only to make it easier for you to specify a particular version. If you don't have, if, if these memory objects, uh, the, I'm sorry, if these DD info statements were exactly the same, um, but you had different data set names, it loads the first one it finds. So in order to differentiate between these two that have exactly the same DD name, we include the optional parameter of FMID. So if an API called and said, hey, I'm version 17, he's going to know that FMID, he's going to load the lower DD info block. If he calls and he's a different version, it's going to load the upper block, which is the default block. The, the benefit to all of this is a couple of things besides, besides the, uh, the making it simpler to deploy. We also make it simpler to, you know, I went backwards. We also are using a CMSC PARM to verify, oh, to verify uh, that um, the PARMs are correct. So what we do is we allow you to do a verify on the PARMs and see before you do an IPL or before you refresh it that the PARMs are correct. We validate that the DD name is correct. It's a valid CompuWare DD name, and we validate that it is a um, that it is a valid data set name. We also validate 
whether the data set name exists, and we validate whether it's APF authorized if it needs to be. Now, we only issue a warning message on the APF authorization and the existing because some people would be implementing on a different LPAR or they would be implementing with an IPL, and we just want to make sure that um, we're not preventing somebody from refreshing when they intend to. Another, another point, important point is that all of the product data sets are now located in one spot so you can see what all the product uh, naming convention is for all the products. Sometimes customers, they differ that they, from one product to another, differ from one product to another, and sometimes they're the same, but it's nice to have them all in one spot. A third benefit is that um, if a Avondade function makes use of a file aid command, you no longer have to do any additional customization. Fi uh, Avondade would be able to locate the, the needed file aid data sets and automatically use those data sets. So it really greatly aids in cross product, product uh, uh, customization. This data set that you see on the screen right now is where we have a sample member um, that's the ECC product, whatever you have for your high-level qualifier. The low-level qualifier of SL, CX, CNTL has a sample DDSN member in there. And that sample has a DD info block for all of the CompuWare products um, so that you can, if you want to implement them, you can copy it from that data set into your common PowerMLive member, uncomment them, and do a refresh, and you should be okay. So the bottom line is we we, we wanted to give a really good description of, of where we were uh, and a detailed explanation of how it works so that it wasn't confusing. But the basic is if you put the CompuWare DD names in this member and refresh it and use the C lists and recs as we deliver them, that's all you have to do. No longer will you have to do any more hard coding of, uh, of data sets in that information. So that concludes our part of the presentation, and now it's your turn to ask questions or make any comments. We've got uh, several questions that have come in during the presentation, so um, we'll take them. The first question is um, for Keith, I think. This, uh, the system symbolics, do they have to be defined to be LPAR, or can they also be set my PARM equals question mark, question mark, question mark, DD cards included at the top of the CMSC JCL deck. So that's a that's a really good question, and everything that we have is defined around uh, using system symbolics. So that is the that is the the answer that I'm going to give. So let me double check on the set my PARM DD cards. I don't believe that they'll work, but it's something that we'll need to check into. But it's designed around replacing with system symbolics. Okay. Uh, here, here's another one for you, Keith. Do you have to specify the DDSN XX PARM within CMSC like the other PARM Live members? So the default DDSN member is DDSN00. So if you don't specify anything, that's what you're going to get. That is going to be the default. If you want to change the default uh, suffix to something other than 00, then you would specify it, it like any other CMSC PARM Live member, correct? Okay. Thanks. Let's see. Here's another one. Part of the normal installations is the creation or documentation of a bridge exec to invoke the product. I mean, uh, for example, we might use file aid on the panels, but would need the actual code for it. I'm not sure what the question is there. Do you? Okay. So you have your own. I'm assuming that in this case you have your own uh, C list that you execute from an ISP uh, panel that allocates file aid data sets, um, and then you execute file aid from there. Um, so the answer is the exec that you use right now could still be used, customized just how it is today. I think what you were looking for is if we could provide you with samples of the API to allocate the actual data sets that you need for invocation side. Um, so that's a really good question, and I'd love to follow up with that one 
because um, I, I get exactly where you're going. I believe that there is a sample from FileAid that will eliminate the need for you to have to change anything in your bridge, bridge exec except for to execute the FIDynam allocation C list that FileA provides. But let me double check and make sure that that works like that. Okay. Here's another question. Uh, hi, I'm installing Avondade FileA CMSC 1702 at this moment. Should I wait for April for 18? I don't necessarily think we're going 18, right? Or yeah, the, the product versions are not changing, but I would definitely get the maintenance that's, that's going to come out in a week. Uh, so it will be the same versions of those products. This is implemented with a PTF. So you, um, you will definitely be able to use the versions you have now, but apply the maintenance and, uh, and set it up in ECC after you've applied the maintenance. I think we have time for one or two more. Okay, this uh, this is, should be a short one because I think it was uh, touched on. Can you add symbolics within the CMSC PARMWIDE dataset members? Y yes, you're, you're you're using the system symbolics, and any of the PARMWIDE dataset members use system symbolics, and they resolve those symbolics when the member is loaded. So yes, definitely you can use symbolics within the CMSC Parm Live dataset members. Okay, why don't we do one last one here? And it's um, actually, I'm boy, the questions are pouring in, so we're going to have to get back to some of you guys on these. Um, but the last one I was going to ask is, can we add non-compuware datasets to the CMSC Parm Live members? Kate. Okay. So that's a great question. Um, right now, currently, you cannot because we verify that they are CompuWare DD names. But one of the things we are thinking of in the future is that it would be valuable to include DD names for um, DB2 or CICS or any other product that you want. So if you have a thought on that, uh, add it to the, uh, to the survey answer if you think it would be valuable to have um, CompuWare, non-CompuWare data sets be, uh, be able to be resolved with this process. Thanks to the team again. Um, it was a great webcast. Again, keep your questions coming in. Any of the questions that do come in, we will definitely um, follow up directly with you after the uh, webcast. Again, thank you for taking your time today to be with us, and uh, this concludes today's presentation. Have a great day.